54,000 years ago, there was one interesting group that lived in caves. A father, daughter, and a couple of other members who were their close relatives. And the cool thing here is that they were the first Neanderthal family we know about. A team of scientists studied ancient DNA from their teeth and bones to learn more about early human society. And this research showed a cool thing. They probably lived in these caves at the same time, together. There were 11 Neanderthals that lived together in one cave and two others from another cave that was somewhere close in the neighborhood. So there were 13 of them, eight grown-ups and five kids. Together with their DNA, scientists also found their stone tools and animal bones. Neanderthals are the ancient human relatives that are definitely the closest ones to us. Their skull was long and flattened if you compare it to the skull of Homo sapiens that's more globular. They also had this specific prominent brow ridge above the eyes. You can easily recognize them by their face too, with the central part of the face protruding forward. Plus, they had a large, broad nose. Some believe their nose was a way of adapting to living in cold, dry environments. When the inside of the nose is bigger, it moistens and warms the air you breathe better. Unlike us, they didn't have much of a chin. Also, scratch marks on their front teeth tell us Neanderthals used them like a third hand when they would prepare food and work with materials they used. Their bodies were strong and muscular with wide shoulders and hips. Their average height was 5 to 5.7 feet with a weight of 140 to 180 pounds. Their stocky appearance with short lower arm and lower leg bones minimized their skin surface, better protecting them from the cold. Their lifespan was about 30 years, even though some of them lived longer than that. Neanderthals would dwell in regions that are now Europe and Asia for over 350,000 years. They disappeared somewhere around 40,000 years ago. That's about the time we could find traces of Homo sapiens in Europe. Their families were close-knit groups of 10 to 20. That's a lot less than the population of any ancient or modern human community. It's more like the size of groups of endangered species that are close to going extinct. These Neanderthals lived in their caves with small communities, but they didn't live isolated from the rest of their kind. They relied on each other for survival. They took care of one another, especially those who couldn't care for themselves. Also, their caves aren't as primitive as we might imagine. For example, they had a hole close to hearths and they would probably use it to heat water. Also, they would organize their space. They had sleeping areas, parts of the cave where they could leave trash, and areas where they could make stone tools and prepare their food. They would travel through the river valleys to catch their prey, such as bison, ibex, horses, and other animals. They were skilled in planning their strategies. Some studies showed they were aware of reindeer migration patterns, so they would plan their actions according to their predictions of where their prey could move. One of the biggest animals they would go after was the woolly mammoth. You know them, a relative of modern elephants covered in fur with a weight of up to 12,000 pounds that went extinct a long time ago. And studies show woolly mammoths and Neanderthals shared some genetic traits. It's not that surprising when you think about it. Both species developed from African ancestors before they managed to adapt to the cold, harsh climates of Eurasia during the Ice Age. So they faced similar conditions and both went extinct at about the same time. Neanderthals also used stone to make tools, similar to ones other early humans used, such as scrapers and blades made from stone flakes. These tools scientists found in both of the caves they studied are created using the same raw materials. That means the communities probably hung out and interacted with each other in some way. Until the 20th century, many thought that Neanderthals were very different from modern humans considering their genetics, physical appearance, and behavior. But more recent discoveries about this well-preserved Eurasian fossil population have shown that some of the people in it were the same as people alive today. Neanderthals lived before and during the last ice age in some of the harshest places that humans have ever lived. 
Besides their tools and catching animals, they also gathered plants from around their area. They would also eat cooked vegetables relatively often. Their ability to stay alive for tens of thousands of years during the last ice age is a good example of how humans can adapt to almost any situation. Neanderthals made the earliest cave art that we know about. Scientists explored three Spanish caves where they lived and all of them had black and red paintings of dots, animals, and geometric symbols, together with handprints, hand stencils, and engravings. These paintings were made more than 60,000 years ago. Since Homo sapiens came to Europe 20,000 years after that, we can assume Neanderthals were the only human species on the continent at the time, so they must have been the ones who created this art. Also, these caves were 435 miles apart, so it wasn't like only some of the Neanderthals knew about it. Paintings were obviously their long-lived tradition. They were also big fans of fashion. They made their own jewelry, some of it out of eagle talons. The oldest examples we could find are nearly 130,000 years old. They also most likely used pigment to camouflage or decorate their bodies. Also, Homo sapiens weren't the only species that used fires. Researchers looked at more than 140 fireplace sites across Europe and realized Neanderthals used fire there for a long time too. These signs included charcoal, burned bones, and heated stone artifacts. Neanderthals used fire for cooking food and making tools. They would stick wooden shafts into pieces of stone with pitch, which would be like natural glue. Since burning the bark of birch trees is the only way to make this sticky liquid, the Neanderthals must have been able to control fire. Most people imagine Neanderthals probably grunted, but that's not true in reality. They didn't quite sound like us either. Their big chest, posture, and the shape of their throats probably resulted in a voice that was louder and higher pitched than the average human's voice. They probably didn't have sophisticated vocabularies as we do, but they could use complex speech because they had the hyoid bone. It's this little thing we have in our neck too, the one that supports the root of our tongue. It's the same feature that allows us to vocalize as we do. They were more similar to us than we might expect. Some believe Neanderthals even built boats so they could sail across the Mediterranean. And it's not like Neanderthals lived somewhere, went extinct, and then modern humans showed up. It seems these groups did meet around 100,000 years ago in the Arabian Peninsula or in the Middle East. That's when the first groups of modern humans were moving from Africa. Scientists analyzed the DNA of one of the Neanderthal women that lived more than 50,000 years ago, and it includes genetics from modern humans too. Some traits we have, like skin and hair color, mood and sleeping patterns, are connected to the amount of sunlight we get. Neanderthals lived in Europe and Asia for a long time before modern humans arrived there, so they were used to less sunlight compared to the ones who came from Africa. Neanderthals had different traits because of their exposure to less sunlight, and these traits were passed on to their offspring when they had children with modern humans. In other words, some of the traits that modern humans have today are influenced by Neanderthal genes. For example, people who are night owls often have Neanderthal genes. Also, around 1% of Neanderthals had light skin, red hair, and perhaps even freckles. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.